Hey guys, in today's video, I just want to go over some of the important accessories that I recommend to all of my workshop clients when we go to photograph seascapes along the Oregon coast or Iceland or wherever we happen to be going. And in this video, I just figured I would share that with you guys. And I'll probably share it with my workshop clients as well, just so we can actually see some of the things that are on my recommended gear list that I send out to all my clients before a workshop. So first thing and the most obvious thing for photographing seascapes are going to be filters. So I use case Wolverine magnetic filters. And what I love the, about them, well, first of all, this is my entire filter setup. In here, I typically carry a three stop, a six stop, a 10 stop, a circular polarizer and a six stop circular polarizer. And all of that fits in here. So I am a circular filter user, meaning not a graduated filter. I don't use big square ones because they're big and bulky and kind of don't really need them. One of the things that I love so much about these case Wolverine filters is that they're magnetic. So they go on super fast, super quick. And this same filter will fit on all of my lenses, even though they have different filter thread sizes because they all have that magnetic adapter on there. Um, so as I was saying, I don't recommend and I don't and really, I'm not a believer in graduated filters simply because let's say you use too strong of an ND filter or too strong of a filter on your graduated filter and you want to undo it, you can't. And for that reason, it's a destructive workflow because it can't be undone. And I'm a much bigger proponent of just bracketing images or exposing for highlights rather than using graduated filters. One, because you can't undo them. Two, because they're big, bulky, and expensive, and you don't need them. All you really need is a little filter setup like that. I really like those. And by the way, there's going to be links for all of this stuff in the description down below. So the next thing that I recommend, because we're photographing around water, I use these around waterfalls, but especially when I'm shooting seascapes, these are Kimtech scientific lens wipes. So all these are, are little tissues. And we, what these are for is absorbing water off of your front element. They're actually designed for scientific equipment. So you have a microscope or something and you get a little bit of water or you need to clean it, you use these scientific lens wipes. And what's so nice about these is when you have a front element that gets a little bit of water on them, this will actually absorb the water rather than just push it around. They're hyper absorbent, they're lint free, and they're really cheap. I think this huge box of how many? It's a box of 280. This was like five bucks. Um, I actually prefer these little packages you can get because this fits much easier in your camera bag, as you can imagine. And these are just a, a little bit thicker material. It's a little bit um, softer and thicker, a little bit more like a lens cloth, only still hyper absorbent. So you can find these as well. I'll try to get links in the description below for these. Love those for any time you're getting splashed, which hopefully isn't too often. If you are getting splashed often, I also recommend having one of these. So this is just a microfiber camp towel. You can get them really cheap off of Amazon. And if you're going to be photographing around water and there's a chance that your gear might get wet, or maybe it's just getting rained on, it's really nice to have a way of quickly drying off your gear. And if the worst should happen and your camera gets hit hard by a wave, you got to get it dry as fast as you can. You don't want to hike all the way back to the car before drying it off. So something like this, again, pretty cheap, fits in the camera bag easily. You can dry off your gear in, in case of a catastrophe. So probably my, my favorite photography accessory I've ever purchased, and I think everybody that's ever purchased one of these as well agrees with me, are these. So these are NRS boundary socks. You've probably heard me rant about these before. I've been, I've been, um, talking about these for quite a while. They, essentially, they are a dry suit that goes up to your knee. And then up at the knee, you can see that it's got this kind of special material here. And this will seal against your skin. So no matter what, no matter, I could get in neck deep and my feet will still be dry and warm. And that's really cool because also look how, look how small they pack up. If you're traveling internationally or 
you're just hiking into a location. Something like this is really handy because this is way lighter than a set of waders or maybe a big pair of muck boots. The other thing about muck boots is if you get in too deep, the water goes over the top of the boot and goes in your boot and then you have wet feet. These, this will absolutely never happen. I'll always wear like a pair of like wool socks underneath them. So I have some insulation to help keep my foot warm. Also makes getting these off a little bit easier. And then I wear some kind of like mesh tennis shoe that'll dry really quickly over the top of these, usually a half size larger, maybe even a full size larger. Actually, now I wear a, a pair of fancy fly fishing boots over the top of these. They're made by Corker. And what's cool about those is that they drain because they're made for fly fishing. But you can actually change the sole. The sole is interchangeable. So you can have maybe a felt bottom if you're going to be on slick rock. Or you can have like spiky bottoms if you're going to be on ice. Um, really like those. But kind of overkill if you don't use them really often. Another super important accessory is going to be a shutter release or remote. Um, I really like these Bluetooth wireless remotes on the Sony system. They're not cheap. This is like 75 bucks. But what I like about it is that it has a really long range. So most of the time when I'm out shooting, I'm teaching a workshop, which means that Ideally, if I'm doing my job properly, I'm walking around and looking over people's shoulders and helping them. But what's cool is I can have my tripod set up on and then have this in my pocket. And as I'm helping this person, I can also be like, boop, 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 take photos as I'm multitasking, right? So these are really cool because when you were photographing seascapes, you're often using shutter speeds of like a fifth of a second to a half second or much longer. And you don't want to be jostling your camera. So you could go into a two second timer. I hear you saying that already. And the reason you, that doesn't work very well is because when we're photographing waves, we're often trying to time things precisely. And it's really difficult to time something precisely two seconds in advance. So the way I like to photograph waves oftentimes is I will put my camera into a high speed continuous shooting mode and then as that wave comes in, I'll use a wireless shutter release so I'm not bumping my camera. And I will take a whole series of images as that wave is either coming in or receding into the distance. That way I can choose afterwards which particular moment works best with the composition or which particular water flow I like best. And that way I'm not jostling my camera by holding down that shutter. So wireless shutter releases or even a wired shutter release Super important for seascapes. Another thing that is super important for seascapes or anytime you're photographing on a beach are going to be tripod spikes. So these are just like they sound. They're a spike for the bottom of your tripod. These, these particular spikes are made by Really Right Stuff. They're pretty expensive, but you can get affordable versions. I like these because they are so long. And the purpose of these is that when you're on a beach, when the first wave comes in and then recedes back out, your tripod will kind of shimmy and shake as it becomes undermined by the surf. So what you do with a spike is that when that wave comes in and starts to recede back out, you take that spike and you jam it into the sand. And I should note that, that you jam it into the sand after extending this last section. That way you're not putting your threads down in the sand. So as that wave recedes, you jam it down into the sand as far as you can. And once it becomes undermined and you get it down there, you know, a, a healthy amount, your tripod is going to be not only very stable because it can't be knocked over, but it's not going to shimmy and shake with every incoming wave. I've seen people use like CDs and big discs or like the, the kind of bottoms that you'll see on trekking poles for snow. You don't want to use that stuff because Every time a wave comes in, it's going to either bury it a little bit or undermine it a little bit. But with a spike, you can bury it down deep and it's going to be much more stable and it's never going to get knocked over. So spikes are a must when you're shooting on a beach. If you're a mirrorless shooter like myself, I like to travel with these anytime I'm going anywhere, pretty much. These are just sensor swabs. So this is a swab the same size as your sensor to get off that sensor dust. And... Since switching to mirrorless, I use a lot of these. They're really easy to use. You just take your lens off, expose your sensor, go into a manual cleaning or a manual sensor cleaning mode. That way the image stabilization or the IBIS is turned off. 
and then you just get rid of your dust like that. These things are really nice when you're traveling, especially if you're doing any kind of time lapse or anything like that, and you get really tired of having to clone out all of that sensor dust. And one more little thing that has greatly enriched my life is this guy. So this is just a portable boot dryer. So when you're photographing seascapes or on the beach often, you get stuff wet. Whether it's, you know, your NRS boundary socks start to stink or the shoes that you're putting over those boots start to stink because they're getting wet and not getting properly dried out. We've all been there where we're in the hotel room and we're trying to rig up the, the, the hair dryer in a, in a way to dry our clothes. Well, you don't have to do that anymore with one of these guys. It's got a timer. It packs in your suitcase really easily and dries not only boots, but socks, pants, gloves, hats, anything that gets soaking wet. I have I dry it all on one of these, and I absolutely love this thing because it, there's nothing better than, like, on a cold morning, putting your hiking boots and your socks on this for just a couple minutes, getting them nice and toasty, and then putting them on before going out into the cold. Absolutely love a boot dryer when I'm traveling. All right, guys, hopefully there's something in there somewhere for you. Maybe there's an accessory you haven't seen before. Anybody that goes on a coastal trip with me, this stuff is like required because it, it makes the shooting experience so much easier, especially the NRS boundary socks, because there's nothing worse than trying to be patient with a composition with cold, wet feet. And these will keep your feet warm and dry. So hopefully this helps, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.